What if this and what if that? What if thin or what if fat? What if dog or what if cat? What if fart or what if shat? Tonight, we take a wormhole into the nebulous world of potentiality. Part alternate history speculation. Part stoner ramble. All 100%. Dave Everett. No malarkey, Jack. Back in my day, we didn't have any entertainment at all, except for the old Scranton Village Elder. He only had two teeth. But that guy had a million stories. I ain't joking, fat. We'd sit in the cold every night to hear him tell the tale of the cat he ate once. Nowadays, what with the mobile pages and the web phones and... Netscapes and whatnot, it's hard to figure out what even to watch. Most days I'll just surf AOL. Lost, Jack. How do I click off the page? Why are there so many browsers open? It's all too goddamn much if you ask me. Now listen, fat, I've got your solution. It's called the Pessimist Productions Patreon. You can click the link below and bam, all the entertainment you need, Jack. It's like Billy we- Willy Wink. You know, the chocolate factory thing. Hundreds of exclusive shows. I ain't kidding. Exclusive streams, more news. You can't go wrong. So cancel that AOL. Join the Pessimist Productions Patreon now. Don't wait, or you'll be sorry, Jack. I like it. Very jokery. You watch do uh, It's kind of like, it was kind of like a cross between Joker and Edward Nigma. I kind of felt like. Yeah, you got multiple Batman villains going on at the same it's time. It's like there. if a Joker got together and butt fucked Edward Nigma and they had a butt baby. That would have been my. Oh. Rattle me this. Oh. Rattle me this. Rattle me. <laughs> uh, so, if- yeah, the, tonight's episode was if- born because patrons uh, really liked, I guess, my historical what ifs uh, mini sods. They said, uh, you know, we want a longer version of this. I'd be down for a longer. I saw a lot of that feedback when we posted it on Patreon. So I guess letting you guys know that when you see one of these episodes that's largely discussion based or speculation based and you like the discussion and you think it would do, you know, better as a long episode or you'd like to see more of it, you can always, you know, let us know. We listen to that feedback. So this this episode was born from the positive feedback uh, on that mini sode from the patrons. Your feedback led this episode to me. We care deeply what you think and feel. Yes. We yes. wish to please you only. <laughs> please. <laughs> We're down on our knees. Please, please. Dude, every time we do one of these episodes, I'm just waiting for the keyboard warriors, like, uh, cracking them knuckles. Actually, actually, if you yeah. know anything about history... <laughs> If you weren't ignoramuses, you would have realized that actually Farthington P. K. Paddington never went to North Virginia. Yeah. Blah blah blah. So you know, there's if there's no some North historical Virginia. fucking yeah, some historical fact is wrong or some shit we say is incorrect or whatever, you you have the benefit of Wikipedia. We're fucking in the internet and all other shit. Yeah, we're stupid stoners reacting to shit thrown in our faces. So eat our dicks. Yeah, disclaimer. So anyone just to save you some time. <laughs> You know I me. Mean? I know people are still gonna do that. Actually, anyway, I'm not sweating any of you bitches. I'm not sweating y'all. Well, I ain't sweating either. I'm just, I'm just preemptively explaining. Hey, you that. guys say shit to me. I'll kill you. Well, that's a Jesus. I ain't sweating you, motherfuckers. I will track you down. I will kill you. Damn, dude. Why are you so angsty, TJ? I don't know. We're so mad. It's on Twitter uh, this morning. Oh, why are we on Twitter? You know that explains it all. I realized I needed fucking probably not be on Twitter because. I'll be on Twitter and I'll be like doing stuff. And then she'll be like, hey, baby. she would be like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I'm on Twitter. You know, it's fucking- on Twitter again. You know how it is. I'm on fucking Twitter. God damn it. Then again, I was a rage beast even before then. So I don't know. Mm. I mean, to be honest, at least deep day, down inside. I don't think it makes much of a difference. Yeah. Don't make a goddamn hill of uh, beans, boy. Hill of goddamn brain. I don't make a goddamn hell of beads. Sucks to be one of these guys in the painting that's like way in the background. Like, you're not important enough to, to really paint. So you're just like a rough sketch back there. 
Um, you like that guy? Be like, look, it's me. That's me. I got Benjamin Franklin's like, oh, let's just get this over with. Yeah, he's like rolling his eyes and shit. Like, America, what a joke. So, I wanted the turkey to be the national bird. I wanted to start, uh, and, I'll, and I'll find this guy's name for you guys in a second. There's this quote that I found, though, that it somehow got deleted from my document. But uh, I just went and found it while TJ was vamping there. It says, alternate history is often better at asking questions than answering them. And so, well, that's, yeah, it's way that's, easier I to guess, ask them. that's, I guess, uh, aimed at the actually guys. This is like more of a mental exercise and a fun conversation than it is us actually trying to fucking rewrite history. Because there's no there's no way to do that. Right. Right. Sure. And, you know, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Clearly, there's probably going to be stuff that we're going to miss or not know about or not take into account because the variables are insane. It's literally like a historical event. Yeah, I mean, the width and breadth of it is so <laughs> massive that it's like it's you're talking about, you know, a huge amount of human history. It's Your brief complex. stoner conversation didn't cover yeah. all the nuanced yeah, fabric of the issue. It's that's like, impossible. shut up. Yeah, the, the, no one could do that. It'd be impossible. <laughs> Even if we sat down and like devoted ourselves to it, you know. That was Harry Turtle Dove. Huh? Harry Turtle yeah. Dove, yeah. So he's actually a dude that I looked into, and he's written a bunch of these like historical what if kind of. Yeah, that's novels. right. I've actually uh, I haven't read one of his books, but I was gifted one, and they were like, "You should read this," and I never did. There it was is, like, "What if the Nazis did whatever?" You know. I think one of his more famous books is called "The Disunited States of America," um, where he talks about this very question that we're starting with tonight, which is. What if Great Britain and the colonial landowning aristocracy had worked things out? Oh, so shit. let's go ahead and establish the premise here. We all know that the founding fathers were not these gods among men like they are portrayed in our history books and in our political discourse often, right? We know that right. they were powdered wig wearing, landowning, slave owning aristocrats. And we know so that George Washington would be like the Jeff Bezos of his day. I mean, he was literally the richest person in the country when he became president. I right. Mean, it's just like, hey, you know, it'd be like if we were just like Jeff Bezos is president and, um, you know, Elon Musk would be like Thomas Jefferson and, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. Like these guys were the rich elitist cocksuckers of their day. Right. And we also know that the American Revolution, if you look at the populist sentiment uh, that uh, amongst what we would call the proletariat. People didn't want it. People were like, no, what? Fight Britain? No, thank you. Nuh-uh. We're fine. It was the aristocracy, by and large, that fomented this desire for revolution. And it was purely for monetary reasons. We all know this. Right. I mean, well, yeah, why, but, why pay the taxes to Britain when you right. can have... Well, they're sitting there... You can collect the money yourself. They realize, they're like pretty much lords of this land, but they're paying they're constantly beholden to some fucking asshole across the ocean. They're like, logistically, that motherfucker can't get supply. Like, how is he going to rule from over there? We're the ones who are actually here. We should rule this shit. Well, and it was more just about the money. Like, honestly, they would have been fine with the rule if there was a, you know, a way for them to maximally exploit the money. But he was getting a huge chunk of what they consider to be their profits. Also, King mm-hmm. George uh, and his advisors and policies were actually very punitive to them, too. Anytime they had, they, they took any measures yeah. that he didn't like. So like, it also he was pissing them off constantly with like new taxes and laws and tariffs and shit. Well, and it's like, probably uh, because he probably because he realized how tenuous his grasp on the colonies was. That he's like he's trying to like tighten it, but like you tighten your grip, the sand just falls through faster. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um. You know. You you think when you know this when you know you're talking about a bunch of rich landowners, right? Mm-hmm. who were just tired of sharing all their profits with a monarch, then you understand that the American Revolution might have been able to be brought to some kind of a peaceful you know, resolution where the oligarchs over here got a little bit more cash, or maybe a lot more cash, and Great Britain maintained territorial control over the United States. And you see the British Empire even today, the legacy of it is Canada, Australia, a number of other places like yeah, Barbados. The Commonwealth. Yeah. Plenty so, of other places that never fucking bothered to revolt against them. But, right. You know. And so let's just say 
for you know i don't think it's completely a wild thing to say that let's say king george and his advisors had softened a little bit and the revolutionaries had softened a little bit we came to some middle position that allowed george washington and thomas jefferson and benjamin franklin to be fabulously more wealthy than they already were and to maintain a measure of control over the local populace but while still maintaining like fealty to the british empire so this is a book right here called the two georges actually written by uh, richard dreyfus and harry turtle dove richard yes that richard dreyfus uh, wow yeah. okay <laughs> And cover art by sixth grader. <laughs> yes, cover art by a sixth grader. Um, so this is an alternate history novel set in the 90s, set in a world like we're talking about, where instead of a revolt, America remained a part of the British Commonwealth and what that would be like, like what that alternate history might entail. So here's how it goes down in the book. Washington and King George III struck an agreement in which the United States and Canada, henceforth known as the North American Union, remained part of the British Empire. Uh, the artist uh, of the time, Thomas Gainsborough, commemorated the deal in a painting, The Two Georges, that's emblazoned on money. Uh, well, that's not it. Um, no. th- this is in the world of the book. So okay. uh, Thomas Gainsborough is a known portraiture uh, artist at the time i see and so it's like this is like the revisionist history is that gainsborough uh, commissions this painting or is commissioned to make this painting called the two georges that it ends up on all of our money and is made a ubiquitous symbol of the felicitous union between great britain and her american dominions as it says in the book mm. so hmm um, the, it describes it, now, unfortunately, nobody with any talent has ever actually made this painting that's described in the book, the two Georges. I couldn't find it, but it's described in the book. So here's how it's described. Bowing before the king, George Washington was made to appear shorter than his sovereign. The blue coat that proclaimed his colonial colonelcy was of wool like that of George the third, but of a coarser weave speaking of homespun. Not all of its creases were uh, those of fashion, with a few strategic wrinkles and some frayed fringes depending uh, depending from one epaulette. Gainsborough managed to suggest how long the garment had lain folded in its trunk, while Washington sailed across the Atlantic to advance the colony's interests on the Privy Council George the Third had established. So it's basically like George the Third standing there, probably like a lot like this. Yeah, like, I am great, and then Washington, like, I am also great, but less so, and I bow before you, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, and and he's looking, a, he's looking a little rough around the edges, and he's, you know, kneeling or bowing before yeah. before the king. Um, and this was on all the money and stuff, so I could, I could see something like this happening. I mean, we've got a lot of real world... So just like a little symbol to let people know, like, you you know, this is where you loyal, your loyalties are. The best of you bows to us. So, you know. Right. Um, so a little bit a little bit more uh, kind of like context, I guess. Or do you guys want to like let's let's speculate a little bit about this. So knowing what we know basically about the history of the world since America's independence, what do you guys think? would change here i mean a lot would change Uh, i mean number one you really i think the only way to truly bring america back into the fold is george the third and his advisors the people running the policy there would have had to give america a lot more power in sort of the government structure that existed in the united kingdom which you know which obviously like he would be the ultimate head of state but America would have had to get way more precedence. Yeah, I think, more have to, I think they have to do it more like the Brit, like um, like the Roman Empire did, where it's like, okay, listen, we kicked your ass, um, you're our bitch, but look, you can govern yourselves, do what you want, blah 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 blah. But we make you fo- uh, one. I think at the end had- of the day, you got to pay us this much money. Well, we make you full citizens, and there's like maybe like you know, and like you can govern like you know, you guys can govern the land here in my name but you're still like a vassal state in that sense. But, you know, obviously you have more autonomy. We're not going to come interfere with like a lot of right, policies. But like, what if the, the Roman Empire was, was just, more hands off? They're just like, 
they, they didn't have like you got to specifically do this, that, and the other thing. It's like there was a few like basic laws and shit, but mostly it was just like we don't want to give a fuck what you yeah. do, just give us the money. Yes, give us the money. Right. Yeah. So what if it was as simple as like we give you the authority to elect local magistrates or whatever you want to call them and have them tax the populace and then you will pay x percentage of that tax revenue to the crown i mean that probably could have worked as if it just provided that you know i think if if we if the people that are running you know like basically like the founding fathers would have felt like they had enough autonomy to keep doing what they were doing and they had like you know we have we have the freedom to do like beyond like you know uninterfered with by that you know the crown i think they probably would have you know but at least been open I, to that i idea. think what the colonies would have wanted <laughs> the, like the colonial leadership like the founding fathers the men we think of as the founding fathers i think what they really wanted or what could have probably sati- satiated them at least towards the beginning before things got like too far along would have been just like look we here in britain we're not going to fucking do like we're not going to put specific taxes on goods and shit. We're going to let you figure out how to raise the money. But at the end of the day, you owe us X amount of fucking gold or whatever the fuck we want. Remember, the big thing was right. taxation without representation. Right. And it's like, well, because Britain kept trying to levy specific taxes on like American goods like, and like services. The stamp and shit. Act, like, like tea. Stamps and tea and this and that. And it's like, we don't, you don't even know what the fuck is going on. You're over there. You're fucking making decrees that you don't even understand what the fuck the impact of them is. Cause you're off like a, a billion miles away. Like you, you might as well be like the travel between the two countries. Like what? Like two months at sea or some shit. It's Crazy amount like of fucking that, yeah. time. Yeah. That's like six weeks. I think so. Something. It's like, it's just, an, it's an insane thing to be governed from that distance when, you know, word doesn't even travel fast enough. So it's like, you're, you've got it's got to be frustrating too if you're trying to be someone who's an admi- in an administrative capacity in the United States, what became the United States, what the, then was the colonies. You're an administrative capacity, your local leadership. All of a sudden, this decree comes from the king: crazy tax on tea, crazy tax on stamps, or this, that, or the other thing. It's like what? I can't. No, that's this is not going to work. You don't understand what the logistics of on the ground here. Fuck uh, you. I, I mean, it was more just like. What if, what if it was what if there was just more rep like a, like they were given a representation in the House of Commons or something, you know what I mean? Where it's like they yeah. they could advocate for their. Uh, I think that might have stemmed the tide, but I still think shit would have come to a head eventually because the representation thing is just it's too slow. Yeah, the time period it's just like, well, I, 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 it was too slow for like. Do you th- you really think it would have been though? Like the, what what these like what did these oligarchs want? They wanted they wanted recognition from the king of some kind of autonomy. Yes. They, didn't, they didn't want look if you if you look at the early days of the American Revolution, at least as far as I know from watching a, that HBO uh, Paul Giamatti, uh, the John Adams show. Sure, is like early on they were looking for concessions from the king. They were right. like flexing they wanted, their muscles because they, they wanted, wanted to make the, a deal. Yeah, they they were looking to make a deal. It wasn't until the king pretty much was just like fuck you that they're like all right, well then fuck you. So. I mean, I think that they, you know, they so they had demands early on about what they wanted. So that's the what if then. What if King George's advisors had been a little bit more forward thinking and realized what a fucking jewel they had in these colonies and not to fucking royal it up and just look. Now, I don't know up. if it's just a matter of like historical storytelling or whatever, but like, isn't this wasn't King George kind of just like a lunatic? Like he was, he, like he was a bit, like yeah, he was, a, he was a little bit insane. Yeah. Mad King George. He wasn't the no. only mad king. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, it, he was definitely was that like, but is that like, how much is that like made up by detract? Like, cause obviously, I mean, yeah. So yeah, I, I think for this, you know, <laughs> alternate history, you know, George the third is a little bit wiser of, of the philosopher King. You know, he's like, he's not as mad. He's not a, whatever afflicted him in his life. He was better able to deal with or, or, or didn't afflict him as strongly or not if at all. And they just and, his advisors who like somebody who's infirm. If you think that they're a little crazy, their advisors are basically running the country. And so like if his advisors, well, yeah had been a, a little bit more, you know, bullish on the idea of like, all right, let's give these colonial people a little bit of autonomy, but have them still bend in the knee. And you know what I mean? They're still kind of like a part of the empire and they could have gotten that done. And then yeah, I mean, yeah, they could have look, uh, George the third e- very easily could have probably placated what had happened. Like it, it was a matter of the, you know, he escalated at every fucking turn. Uh, he, you know, he was like, I'm the King. Fuck you. You're going to fucking bat- bend the knee no matter well, what because- I do or say. Because well, because within the lands he rules, that is how it goes. 
So, yeah, I mean, but, so, but, but it's like but he rules those lands, you know, it's like when yes. you have an ocean separating you at this time, like this is not like the time when you can just airdrop a bunch of troops in there. You know, it right. takes a long time and it's hard to maintain those supply but lines. Saying, but that, that informs how you view the world. That right. informs the mentality of a leader like that is like, why do I have to capitulate to a bunch of fucking nobodies? Well, right. the, the answer to that question is because they're an ocean away. But, but he didn't understand the power those people had. It's what, that, that's really what there was a well, disconnect. But, yeah, it's just like. So let's, say, so, let's, so let's say they recognize the power there. They're like, oh, shit, George Washington, these guys, like, they're not just this fucking ragtag band of people that are not to be fucking there. You know, who cares? Like, they had, you know, they had the outside support of France. So, I mean, another, another possibility could have been like they go to France. And, and, and they, maybe not, they don't even treat with so much with the Americans as they basically get, uh, you know, like, hey, look, we can divide up this land or you guys are not they don't support America. We'll sign a treaty with you. Well, well, it's interesting you bring up France because, the you know, there would have been wide ranging implications to this. And uh, all, maybe even all the way up until the French Revolution not happening. So think about right. this. The French Revolution uh happened largely because of the example of the American Revolution and because french uh uh french gold backed a lot of the fucking uh money that was spent during the american revolution uh to the point of draining the coffers of france and putting in, putting france in such well, just dire, like we have uh economic straits right that and they just how we have proxy wars taxes. Today. they they levied taxes and deregulated the economy and shit to the point where people couldn't afford bread so yeah, both of those was... things wouldn't have happened so the french revolution wouldn't have happened at least not in the way that it did. It wouldn't if it had. If it did happen, it probably wouldn't have played out the same way or the same time frame. And I mean, uh, here's an alternate thing: if yeah, like let's say they treated with us and made a deal with us, the Americans might have been going to fucking crush the fucking uh, the French or some shit. Like, hey, let's take over France now. They're so, a rebellion. Uh, they're 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 a fucking. I mean, so there's so many different paths. Well, that here's a question too: is like, you know, maybe uh, maybe monarchism uh, would have lasted a lot longer. Maybe we'd still be in it. Epileps, it's time to go We don't want you here no more Molly, TJ, Scotty too They're so fucking boring